Welcome to another exciting episode of the Men's Lounge. Um, like I always say, Thursday, 9 p.m., check time. You know, definitely we are going to be here to bring you most of the exciting discussions that you'd expect from us. And so last week was the Father's Day, unfortunately. Um, it's interesting how Father's Day then me are lost. But when they, I had to go attend to a few other things. And thanks to uh, my colleague Raymond. Raymond sat in for me. He was in my stead and I really appreciate it. He did, he did a very good job. Apparently, he, he started running the show like it was on football commentary. <laughs> but yeah, Raymond, I bow for you. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you guys also for being part of the show last week. And so last week, there, there were some people who won some prizes. Later on in the, in, the, in the show, I'll bring you pictures of those who won the prizes so that we can also thank them for being part of the show. Again, thanks to Casa Preco Alomo Bites. This show is brought to you by Casa Preco and also being supported by Yam Vita. Yam Vita is from Promacido. And they bring us the onga and all those nice things the kids have been eating. And let me also remind you that um, the Global Media Group Broadcasting Company, obviously, um, is still in the finance month and we're still teaching and teaching and teaching, teaching people how to save and all that. Um, we're going to be ending that very soon for this month and then we'll announce to you also what we have for next month. However, what's most important is the fact that there's something green, you know that green color, the Y, yeah. So there's something new that's come up with YFM. I'm sure you've been hearing some tidbits about it, but today I'll be telling you Two good folks who are here, and when you see them, you're going to know what I'm talking about. I'll take my first break. When I'm back, we should straight to the discussions. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are now very much relaxed in the men's lounge, and we'll be starting the discussions shortly. Um, before I came back, you saw those ads that played. You, it obviously tells you there's something really, really exciting coming up. And so... Feel free to join us on, on all our social media platforms at ETV Ghana, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, all the others at etvghana.com. And also on WhatsApp, start sending us your messages. And um, it's 020-222-054. Now, there's something we'll be introducing also from next week, and that will be the million-dollar question. I would always ask a particular question, and I, I urge you to start sending in your text messages and in trying to answer or tell us what you think um, in trying to answer the same question as well. And so last week, like I said, was Father's Day and some people won some very, very, very nice prizes. And um, it's just fair and right that we let you see who these people are. There were three main winners and uh, we're going to be rolling their images shortly so that you get to know who they are. And so on the screen, you can see father number one, uh, he won a very nice package from Promacido, you know Promacido group, they have the Onga, the Yam Vita and all that. And so you can see the Onga pack also there. And yeah, so that is, um, these are the winners and you, 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 maybe when you meet them someday, I'm sure by now comedy, you should be asking them for some say, Charlie, you know, sort us out. And so moving on, um, there's something about this um, COVID-19 and the fact that people are recovering and obviously when you get to know oh, you COVID nibio, you know that kind of thing. In in English almost a friend of stigmatization. See the truth is that in Ghana you're in Lawson, we are not a lot of people and so when we when we it's easy and that is where the problem even starts from. For me, I stand against stigmatization. It's it's not something that um, any any of us should encourage because say and you won't like it if it was you. So, time up. I've got two gentlemen in the studio. I'm sure you listen to YFM most often. And from Monday to Friday, between 3 and 7 o'clock, the radio, that particular station, is more like a jam. And there's just two people who make it happen. And these people are in the name of DJ Mike Smith, who happens to be the DJ for Drive of Your Life. Mike. What's up? I see you, Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. And so he does it always with um, the man himself who does a lot of the talking and the LPMs and the nice things you've been hearing. And he's in the name of um, Kojo Manuel. Kojo. Big man. You are much closer, so let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and you. and before 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 I bet to ask you know, there's yeah. one thing that's very important. You heard me talk about stigmatization. Yeah. And it's it's something that look, for me I've declared my stance and I I want to know what your stance are on stigmatization before we even start. Yeah, I think I think it's something that a lot of people should take very serious because we are going through a process of um, trying to even understand what the virus is. 
and all of that. And if people are going through uh, the stress of having it and wondering whether they're going to live or not, I don't think that's like uh, the perfect platform for you to, you know, make the situation worse for them. So um, I, I just, and people don't realize, I mean, they feel like just sharing information. But Charlie, if it were you, you wouldn't like it. So you wouldn't like it, don't yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, so don't it's as simple it. as that. Mike. It's about focus and stigmatization. <laughs> Charlie, um, I think it's something we have to take serious. I mean, with especially with what is going on in the world right now, nobody's safe. I mean, so we have to just take it serious and make sure we go by the rules. And then All right. Sure, yeah. mm. So Mike says go by the rules. It's interesting how you see them speak like there are some angels being so calm. Meanwhile, we are angels. Now they they oh. set the, the, the place on fire. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the whole discussion is really going to be centered around why refresh and um, talking about why refresh i in my mind i assume it's it's uh, well so i saw the green color looking different for some time i saw it a on a lot of people's status and and pictures elsewhere i saw the green was it the same green that i know of yeah. it's, it's the same, the green. same green it's so same green. i saw the green looking even much brighter and i'm like okay something is happening then i followed it for a while then i saw why refresh okay something is happening and then today the two men who drive the whole place crazy from Monday to Friday are both here. The I whole Ghana. What, we what drive the this? whole Ghana home. The are you Ghana, Mate? Yes. <laughs> I want to know what this Y Refresh is about. Well, basically, it's, 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 it's a new phase of the station. Mm. It's, it's, um, um, you know, YFM has been around for a minute, but uh, we decided to switch things up and then change, change things, like move things around and then... You know, we also brought in some new guys, and then mm. so we just decided to outdoor them, mm. and then let the the world know that yeah, these guys are here. So nice basically, that is what the Y refresh is about. So it's it's like the new face of YFM. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, but no, it's just the new face of YFM. It's a new more. phase, man. Um, and you hear a lot of vibes and energy, and that's because there's a lot of vibes and, and energy, energy in a new Y, the, you know, Y refresh. Nice one. Yeah. So. I mean, from this time on, what I'm going to take it a bit personal on both of you. Okay, mm. I hope, I hope, say we are okay. Men's lounge, they to me can help you. It depends on what you want to ask. That's my catch there. That's not. So, are you telling me question? Me, I won't answer now. Oh, uh, I don't know. My dream, huh? My dream, huh? We we think about it, but we got you. We got you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mike, I'm going to start with you. I, I t t tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is DJ Mike Smith? Um. I'm DJ Mike Smith, um, an international DJ, multiple award winning international DJ, <laughs> an artist, a fashion icon. Tell him. Um, um, I put out music. I have hits. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know. I work with YFM. I work with the, the biggest radio st urban radio station in the country, YFM. Yeah. I work mm -hmm. with the biggest club in Ghana, mm -hmm. Twist Nightclub. Um, um, I'm single. And uh, <laughs> ready to mingle. Plug. <laughs> Plug. And I'm very expensive. <laughs> very, very nice very. one. So, DJing. Sometimes I wonder how how has DJing been for you? DJing saved my life. Mm. Um, because back then in 2009, I didn't know what to do with my life, and then I found DJing. I embraced it. I hugged DJing. Yeah. <laughs> I took DJing to bed, mm. and then mm. here First I am today. Wife. Ten a decade <coughs> after a decade, I'm still around as DJ Mike Smith, um, one of the biggest DJs in the continent. Nice one. And then yeah, but was there was there any kind of influence like someone who sort of influenced you to want to be a DJ? Or yeah, I used to I used to I used to listen to um, Funk Master Flex, okay, Killer Fingers, um, DJ Black, uh, Kid Capri, um, DJ Scratch, um, yeah, and the, the list is tall. Mm, you know, I mm. used to listen to that, but I didn't, I didn't think I was going to become a DJ, you know, but it just happened. So I just took it and then mm. nurtured it and then... I'll, I'll put the brakes on you for this one. So, Kojo. Yeah. Who's that mic on Kasabi Yeah, yeah, today but, but today the vibe day. Oh, but like, it be, it be music like he play finish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like he makes like 10 already. But why well, we will forgive him for this one? Real quick. So, so, so then, coming to you, when it yeah. comes to Kojo Manuel, yeah. who is Kojo Manuel? Kojo Manuel is just a guy that is living his dream, his passion. Mm. That's basically who I am. Um, I, I started off as an MC. Um, for a while, I, I'm the MC at the 
biggest nightclub in Ghana okay. that Mike would not agree with. Club. I'm not. I'm not going to agree with you on that. <laughs> you know, know that. You know I'm not going to agree with I you know on that. I know he won't agree with that one. We are talking 12 years in the business. Let me talk about myself and leave Mike. He wants to <laughs> argue about clubs. To him. Uh, no, of course. Like you're, you're, come on, it's how can you just say... You, you can't uh -huh. say you, uh, you work with the biggest nightclub okay. in Ghana when I'm here. No, that's not possible. That's not even... You can't. So I, I can't hear him. If he's talking, <laughs> I can't hear him. <laughs> talk to me and the people. Well, I'm currently the um, best MC uh, at the Ghana DJ Awards. Nice one. So, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of work that's gone through that. I'm also a presenter at YFM. I've been around and... Arguably the best hype man in Africa. Nice one. Yeah. Was Fact. there any, anything or anyone that influenced you to, to want to do what you do? Um, a, a, a couple of people, actually. Um, I've had people like Bola Ray mm. influence me. Um, I've had people like Eddie Blay mm -hmm. as well also influence me with the style and the way they go towards things. But there's always an angle where you have to be yourself. So they really did influence me, but I had to find my own niche in mm. between that. It must have taken you a while. Oh, it, it took a while. Mm. It, took, it took me a while because um, I get people saying that, yo, Charlie, you're so lucky. Like, I, see, I saw you like emceeing like last year. No, right now you win an award. I was like, fam. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> they don't know so I've, been, I've, been, I've been doing this, um, I think, for trying to take it professionally. I've been doing this for like five years. Five years. Five to six years, yeah. Mm. Mm. It's been a while. That's some good time you've done there. Yeah. So, 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 Mike. How, how long have you been with YFM? I've been with Y. I was actually with YFM from the jump back in 2009. And then I left and then I came back in 2014. Mm. Yeah, mm. so um, mm. how long is that? Like six years? Mm, well, yeah. So you, you do the first year and the second. And, and then I left change. and then yeah. came back in 2014. Yeah, and I've been So yeah. technically, he's the refresh. Actually, yeah. Did we get that too? What about you? Um, I joined YFM two years ago. Two years ago. And I actually started my radio life and all that from YFM. So, mm. yeah, YFM there, right here. Charlie, but you don't <laughs> sound like it's been two years. So you sound like you've been there for like some six, five. Ten. Yeah, I, I, it's it's the exposure to yeah. the events. Mm. I've been I, I've been on all the big platforms in Ghana, mm. so. Um, but then people shouldn't confuse emceeing with presenting because they are quite two, two different, different things. things. And then you, so you still have to learn and know something you can do here that you can do there mm. and all that. So mm. there's still been some growth in that sense. Mm. Nice one. So I'd, I'd want to pick on the jobs that you both do, okay? Yeah. Yes, you are mo much like a team that mm -hmm. run a whole five hour or six hour. Four, four, four hours. hours. Four yeah. hours. So but it is the longest running show in the mm. week. Yeah. 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 So, so, so you are a team, but then let me put, put some sort of a decipher between the two. So, DJ Mike Smith, mm. being a DJ, mm. are there any challenges? Well, there are a lot of challenges there inside somewhere. Yeah, there are lots of challenges. I mean, take me through some. You actually have to know what the people want, mm. what the people like. You know, DJing um, on radio is different from DJing in a club you actually don't see anybody you're just playing music and it, it gets boring at a time so you have to actually be a fun person to give the fans what they want you know you can't just be playing music and also you don't have to be playing the songs you like mm -hmm. it should be about the people because there are a lot of people listening to you and then you have to make sure that you please all of them so it's 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 quite challenging mm -hmm. but then charlie we've done this for like a decade so yeah yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes you are listening to the radio, a particular DJ, or you're listening to Mike Smith, and then you're like, Charlie, after this song, there, I wish he plays this one, and then boom, it's there. So I it's, wonder, because yeah, you don't see the people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the mindsets. Mm. Like, you know, you know that, okay, this song should follow with this song. Manuel always tells me that, yo, you, you, you always throw my mind somewhere. Like, you always take my mind somewhere, mm. because sometimes I play some song, and then, like, he's expecting me to play some other song, and then I take his mind back. And you go like, oh, you got me. Like, you know, th yeah. that's how it's supposed to be. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, you have to actually know what your people want and then you give it to them. Mm. Nice one. Yeah. So you have to know what your people want and then you give it yeah. to them. Sometimes they don't Knowing even know they, they know. It's a big deal. Though. Sometimes they don't even know that's what they want. Yeah. Until you give it to them. Mm. <laughs> that's what he was trying to explain. Because sometimes, like you're saying, you expect a particular song yeah. to happen. 
and then that's not the song that comes. Yeah. But the one you hear, you realize that wait, I prefer this one more than the one. Than I was the other expecting. one. Yeah. And then later, the other one still comes in. Yeah, yeah. And then you're still cool. Yeah. Do you have challenges too? With that, what you do, I have challenges. I mean, I think there's challenges with everything. Uh, um, I think for one of the first challenges you can ever have with being an MC or presenter is people thinking that the job is just someone talking. Mm. Yeah, so it makes it look very basic. The same way someone would think that the DJ's job is just playing music that somebody has done. You are just playing the music that someone did. So mm. it's not so. <coughs> there's a lot of um, sort of impressing people that comes with it because. A lot of people in my field feel like they need to do extra to be noticed. Yeah. But then I feel like it's a thing about passion where mm. you need to figure out if you like what you're doing. Because um, for for an M for MC in a show, it's very easy. You feed off the crowd, your yeah. emotions, you can tell. Sometimes you can just say like the crowd is dull, you know what to do. When they're hyper, you know what to do. But on radio, mm -hmm. it's just you sitting there with a the microphone. So if whatever you're saying is not hip enough, or it's not exciting enough. It's very difficult to tell whether people, that's why there's a bit, bit of difference. So you have to go and know that I can do this here, but I can do this there. Just like Mike Smith playing a particular song in the club and not on radio. Mm -hmm. I find it quite interesting anyway. You know, I've had the chance to be in the studio once. Um, sometimes I, I, I just walk by the YFM um, studio. You know, I can yeah. see through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a spy. Oh, you have those eyes. Oh, yeah, I can see through. Yeah, not oh. everybody can see, but... Oh, even when you were up there, no, Nukoda, it was easy. <laughs> and you see one human being sitting there alone, talking plenty. You'd be like, ah, what's going on? Because, <laughs> and then, when you listen, if you were in your car listening, the guy actually makes a lot of sense. Like, very consistent. You don't forget what you are saying. You come back, you continue from where you start. Like, whoa. You guys are doing a great job. Bro. Thank you. Tell yeah. me, so... This whole why refresh thing, what do you feel about it, Mike? I um, mean, you have been there for quite a while. Yeah, I've been and there so for a minute. Like, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, you get to work with the, the, the current, you know, the, like the youth, like the, 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 the new face, like the new guys, you know, and it's actually quite refreshing. Refreshing, sorry. Refreshing. Um, I've learned a lot from Manuel since we started. You know, he, he has some energy that I tap into every time when, yeah. I, when I get into yeah. the studio. And I think it's, it's something that all of us need at a point in our life. You know, you always need something new, you know, to spice up whatever, you know. So it's, 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 it's been in interesting. In like mm. The station is now full of, like, new, young and vibrant it's people. New energy. You yeah. know, yeah. and, it, yeah, and <coughs> it's actually and quite, it puts you on your feet. It makes you want to do more. Yeah. So it's 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 be, it's been it's been quite a good, um, you know. Kojo. Yeah. So I want you to paint for me a, a picture of your very first day <laughs> that you took yourself on that beautiful microphone that you use. What, what do you call that one in the studio? Microphone. Right? Yeah, it's just my. Yeah. <laughs> that very first day. Can you just tell me what it felt like? The very first day, I was very nervous. I, I actually had to go around asking people whether I should put it on social media that I'm going to be on YFM. I had to ask like a number of people and there were very uh, different ideas of what I should do. People mm. felt like, oh, of course, let people know. And then someone tell you like, no, like get comfortable first because you're very, and then people like, ah, but you can do this. And I'm like, fam, it's not the same. You know, it's not the same. So it's, you're, you're never screw <coughs> out. But then the thing that helped me is like, um, it's like the same thing I experience when I'm emceeing. Sometimes yeah. you're stepping onto a very big stage mm -hmm. and there are like tens of thousands of people and the stage is very huge and it's just you, that one person mm -hmm. with your mic. The DJs are sometimes, they're okay because they are in the corner. Mm -hmm. they, you hear the name, but you don't really see everything yeah. they do, so they're yeah. okay. So you, when you step on, I have this thing where most of the time I'm actually nervous, I'm actually scared. The minute I hear my own voice, I'm good. Uh, it's okay to be scared. Yeah, it is, and it's good. When you're yeah. not scared, it means it means you don't care about what you're doing yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. So when you're when I'm not scared, I'm I'm scared when I'm not scared. I don't know if you get me. When when I'm not worried about what I'm doing, then it means I'm getting complacent. Mm. So you have to come with that energy every time. Every time I hear myself talk, I can't go wrong from that point on. Mm. It continues like that. Yeah, it bum, continues bum, bum, like and that. And give it to the people. Yeah, you can't. I, I, I don't know about starting and stopping midway. Mm. So, 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 would you say then that?
being at YFM has, has sort of helped you, you know, it's helped help you improve? A lot, mm -hmm. a lot. I mean, and the people that I get to work with are very amazing. I mean, um, someone like Mike Smith, his energy. And most of the time, I tell him that um, people, people have this thing where they feel like they can compare themselves with people at certain levels. And I'm like, yo, when you're not on that level, you don't get to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm working with Mike Smith, I'm working with Loft, I'm yeah. working with DJ Kess and all these people, yeah. and they're very talented. So when you have, you need help with something, it's very easy mm. for you to mm. be sorted out, mm. you know, how to go about it. Wow. Well, if you're just joining us, we are still in the men's lounge, uh, talking to DJ Mike Smith and then Kojo Mano. Um, I'm going to go on the next break. When we are back, Mike, you tell us how it felt the very first day in YFM. Please stay with us. Welcome back if you're just joining us. We are still in the men's lounge and I'm still here with Kojo Manuel and then DJ Mike Smith. And before we left, I did say that uh, Mike Smith should tell us, um, I mean, paint a picture. Tell us that very first day in YFM. How was it? Hmm. I, 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 rec I recall that day like it was just yesterday, hmm. you know. So back in 2009, um, I was very young. I didn't know what to do with my life. I was trying to find myself. I was just on the streets, you know, didn't know what to do with my life. And then um, I, was, I was friends with um, most of the industry people. I was friends with Nana Kwame Osei Saponokus, yeah. uh, the godfather, um, and a few, few people in the industry. So Nokus told me about YFM. We had a gig. I think it was um, the Can Twenty Two Eight, two eight or yeah, something, yeah. Can two eight. And then we worked together. I was mm. I was working with an agency, yeah. So we we're working together, and then he said that okay, there's a radio station coming up, YFM, blah 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 blah. I loved music back then. I didn't know I was going to become a DJ. I actually thought I was going to become an artist. I was going to be rapping or singing. I'm actually a good singer. Mm. Yeah. So um, quite eh? Oh, so oh, like you haven't heard the song, eh? oh, yeah. <laughs> So like he told he told us about it. I was like, okay, cool, all right, cool. And so before then, I was doing a show with um Ochami Kofi on Hot FM. Okay, I was actually an entertainment host. I was doing entertainment review on the show and and all that. But then, so Nana Kwame told me about YFM, and I was like, okay, cool. So when they, they when when it happened, when they, the the this they started, I was like, okay, I want to join. As a presenter, I want to come do my show on YFM, and then you know, and he said, "Nah, like we've already taken the presenters, so the only spot that we have now left is a DJ spot, which is going to be to be like the graveyard shift, like the night shift, like from midnight to the following morning." And I was like, "Yeah, why not? I can do it." I didn't know jack about DJing. I didn't know anything about DJing. I hadn't DJed before anywhere. Wow! And then I was like, "Yeah, I will do it." So I came here. Yeah, he was here. I came here to meet the bosses, and they were like, "Okay, we'll give it. We'll give you. We'll give you the chance to do what you want to do." So it was in the morning, and then I went back. I was supposed to come in the evening, like after 10 p.m. after Jeremy's show. That it was Jeremy at that time. So I went home, and then I called a few friends. Just on the spot, I learned how to DJ with a virtual DJ. Okay. Got some song. Put some songs together. And then, boom, I borrowed a laptop from a friend. So I got here like 9.30. Um, Jeremy was still on air. And he was like, Jerry, I knew Jeremy back then. Back I mean, then, yeah. before <coughs> then, actu actually, okay, let me, let me, let me say, let me, let me put it this way. Actually, Jeremy and Jay Foley actually gave me to Vision DJ to show me how to DJ. Okay. So I used to go and sit by Vision DJ when he was DJing at his old station before he came to IFM. Oh, so I was just with him. Like we, I go to sit, I sit, I sit with him. He DJ throughout the night. I sit there, watch what he's doing and all that. So I came in and then Nokus was like, okay, this is it, do it. And then I was like, yeah, I got this. So I went in the studio and then I started doing what I learned during the day. So I started playing music, playing mixes back to back to back to back. And then he left. And then he came back after an hour. And then he said, he showed me a message. He was like, people are really going crazy about what you're doing. Like some people are texting me that, who is that DJ on air? Who is that DJ at the station playing all those dope songs? And I was like, oh, wow. He didn't know that I didn't know how to DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, so he was like, oh, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. 
So Charlie, he, hearing that, he gave me some vim. Yeah. I was like, yo, yeah, Charlie, now people like what I'm doing. So let me just let go me all out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's how I started. And then wow. I killed it. So the next day I came in and they were like, yo, you're good. So we think we want to add you to the team. Mm. And then they employed me. They gave me the graveyard shift, which was like midnight the following morning. So I played yeah. throughout the night. Yeah. So Miss Nah comes on. And then, you know, I was doing it. So I, I, I took that chance and then did what I had to do. So I actually learned on the job. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't yeah. know anything about DJing, mm -hmm. but I just... And then that's, that's such an encouraging story. On the men's lounge, we always say that we want to teach the young people to become responsible adults. And these are some of the things. 12, 11, 12 years ago, he borrowed a laptop. I don't want to ask you how many laptops you have today, but I can tell you for a fact <laughs> that me who you crowd on your status, I've seen like two. <laughs> yeah, I see two often. That yeah, standing by one and life, yeah, life. I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. know what he uses it for, but I, I, I see it all the time. Yeah, life is like that. In the beginning, it's very hard. Yeah, you know, but when you are like focused and when you know, like you know what you want, you get it. True, Gojo. Yeah, no, no. You heard him. I heard him. How did your start? I want, I want, I want that story. That story. That <laughs> that, that story that got you there. Like. Okay, I may, I'll do it. Well, my, I want to know that. My story. story is quite interesting because um, all the way to level 200, I wasn't even a party person. I wasn't, uh, for me, having a crazy weekend was going to one drink up. Okay. Some small drink up in someone's room. I wasn't going for outside events and all of that. I wasn't that type of person. So it was funny when um, my roommate, who happened to me in the final year, who was there, Organizing secretary for the JCR at Genos in mm -hmm. University of Ghana. Okay. So, and then he was a part time MC. He wasn't like a serious MC, but then he wanted to do that. So, he was organizing the dinner for the hall for the leavers, for the final year students. And he, uh, due to his poor planning, he didn't realize that you can't organize the event and MC it at the same time. So, an hour to the event, he came to the room all panicky and he was like, Yo, I need an MC, I need an MC. And it was never my intention to be an MC. So I wasn't bothered. I was watching my series just on my bed. And then he was like, you said, feel like your English no bad like that. Come MC. And I was like, no, nah, I can't do it. And then he took my shirt and started ironing it for me. That, yo, child, I need you to do this for me. It's a favor. I beg you. And because he was my senior, I sort of felt like, OK, let me do this as a favor for him. And I don't go lie, you have to say this one in PJ. I don't go lie, you my legs shake wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was my first time standing yeah. in front of, you know, you're in the hall, you're seeing these same people and there are lecturers and all of those people yeah. around. So coordinating yourself is a bit of a tax. But at the end of the day, people were like, oh, you did well. And that's when the whole vibe started. So it's like they used me as the guy they would go to when they don't want to spend on somebody to yeah. come and do it. And then I did a lot of the whole activities for a while. And then it got to a point when they were not picking me because when they have a bigger budget, they want to pick someone bigger. Then the SRC, I started to do SRC concerts and stuff. And then with that, when I joined Echo House, it changed because I was a formal MC. I yeah. was dressed up in the kaftan, suit and tie. <laughs> That's how I started. So, <laughs> my take can't even picture that. <laughs> I was dressed in my suit and tie doing all these events. But when I, when I joined Echo, um, around that time I was doing a bit of concert and party one or two here. And I actually created an Instagram page mm. just so that I can stalk people that post flyers for parties. And I'll call the RSVP number on it and ask them, please, do you have an MC? I want to come and MC for free. And then most of the time I'll hear no. I remember a guy telling me, point black, see, you never climb my stage, forget. Ah, yeah. Really? And the day I met that guy, we were all going to a, the same event. I was a co-MC. I was only helping the MC. At the end of the show, he walked up to me and was like, give me your number. You will be on that show. And did, then did he, did he know it was you? He, he didn't know I was part of the event. He mm. didn't know I was going to be an mm. MC on mm. the event. But then when he got there, and he told me that you'll never be on my show, two hours before <coughs> the show, mm. then we met, a, we met at the show. Three about the show lasted for let's say about four or five hours. Yeah. After five hours, he walked up to me when everybody was leaving and came and was like, Give me your number. <laughs> I want you to be the MC. So yeah. it's like my style switched from being a corporate type mm. of MC to mm. being a party MC because I was associated with Echo for a while. And Echo does a lot of youth programs, so concerts yeah. and parties yeah. and yeah. stuff. So yeah. 
that's when I learned how to be a hype man and all of that. But the core of the whole thing was I've always been an MC. So switching from that to getting to the point where, like from the point where people just use you to cut costs. Yeah. To the point where now you're the most sought after party You've gone MC. through the mail, man. You yeah. have. Bro, it's a long line. I tell you. Bro, we can travel, right? Yeah. We travel, go to Cape Coast. And then you, the MC, you don't have a room. <laughs> it is, you, have, you don't have a room. Where you sleep is based on who you like, who is like friends with you yeah. at a place. Yeah. So to come to that point where someone wants to sign a check ahead of time, make sure you're booked for this day, and want to put your artwork out because they feel like we need you for this show, that for me, like, I'm happy. But it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of you hard work. You may not have noticed, but it's a lot of hard yeah, work. Yeah, it's a lot of hard work. And, and it's a lot of learning. Mm. Uh, mm. Because I think one of the big things people don't learn is that when, once people tell you that you're doing well, and I say this in the studio all the time, like, when you get social media hype or when your friends tell you, Charlie, you sport there. I do this thing where I check the way you say you sport there today compared to tomorrow, if you say it in the same way, because I'm assessing myself. If I did better today, and you said the same as sport, I won't listen to you again. But the talk say you sport sport there. Yeah, because because <laughs> there has to be a, there has to yeah, be a measurement. Change, yeah, yeah it, it sounds really basic, but uh, yeah. th there has to be a but measurement of how you're you. moving from A to B. To B, yeah. Yeah, yeah because yeah. this yeah. work, this wouldn't work. And Charlie, is your coordination with the DJs as well? And mm. I always give that shout out because if I'm working with a DJ that doesn't understand music. I it suffer more. Kills the energy. Yeah. yeah. But then if he knows what he's doing, then make the work a little easier. So, so Manuel, now you are the most sought after MC. Let me just make it simple. Yeah, I mean, uh, in and terms then, of party, yes. concert, MC. And yeah. then also, you recently got an award at the, yeah. um, uh, the, 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 the Ghana DJ the Awards. Ghana DJ Awards. Yeah. Now, you didn't even know you're in school, all of us, you're co school child. I want to be doctor, I want to be this. <laughs> you didn't even know. Yeah. But today, this is where you are. Have you got any regrets? I don't have any regrets. I don't, I don't have any regrets at all. Because, and, and, and I'm not saying this because I'm here, so mm. yeah, no. I'm saying I don't have any regrets because I know for a fact that life is a journey. Yeah. And the journey that includes your passion is the most important journey of all. Yeah. And this journey has my passion embedded in it. So I'm happy. Well, I wish the producers could find Manuel's photo like six years ago or probably seven <laughs> years ago. I, I, I don't know. I think I'm beginning to understand why Mike Smith was laughing because <laughs> I look at him. <laughs> yeah, it's actually difficult trying to picture this man in suit and tie or something. I know, right? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people have seen me. I, I don't Charlie, think anybody has ever seen Just find <laughs> one. We need just one. Let's see only one. Mike, so before we came back after the break, mm. There's the song I saw, you know, and I know about this other one that you have. I mean, I, I know you, in fact, it belongs yeah, to you. Call Chile. Thank you. And, and I will be feeling. <laughs> so, interestingly, I'm actually. But a for good some reason, I've, I've, I've seen that you are just in there. Like yeah. that. But, but can I snitch? He, he's, he's actually singing on a particular song. <laughs> the, the one with Family. Thank God it's Friday. Oh. Yeah, really? Mike Smith is at the end there with some vocals, yo, bro. So I, I've actually been wondering how uh, Mike Smith. Let me let me tell career. you, let me tell you how I found out Mike Smith was singing because the song was playing. He was actually there, and then I think he had just stepped out, and I was like, ah, this is familiar, right? But the voice has changed. He was like, no, that's Mike Smith. I was like, hold on, <laughs> just listen to things. It's like, yo, it is Mike Smith. Because he's on a song with Famia, yeah. and the way he's singing, if you don't take your time, you will know that's a different person from Famia. <laughs> uh, are you trying to say that he has some very good voice? And uh, Charlie, it's okay. My <laughs> how did it start? Well, um, I was born into a musical family, if I should say. My mom is a chorister. Mm -hmm. My sister sings. My dad plays um, the guitar, the keyboard, etc. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's actually part of me, and I was in a choir. Like, you know, I used to, yeah, I used to sing, I used to play the keyboard, I used to play the drums, you know. Hold I was on, hold on, Mike, wait, wait. You were in the choir? <laughs> yeah. Like in ropes. Can, yeah. can you picture that one? Actually, that's what I'm going to <laughs> yeah. So then I had a problem with yours. I was like, okay, this is my now, <laughs> now Mike Smith, choir, rope, ropes. Yeah. And then you were singing what? I was singing. <laughs> I was actually, um, uh, I actually did auto turner and all those backing. You know, 
I did all those, and I was also a lead singer at a point. Oh, you were? Yeah. Wow. Back, yeah. I, I grew up in a church house. It's just around here. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So Shall the you? church house, like, I used to sleep there. I was actually the guy who used to clean the church before they come, they ah, come church. to church. Yeah, like church. the church we know. Yeah, church. it's just yeah. around here. They're very spiritual people. This why refresh has <laughs> surprises. <laughs> well, I didn't think there were some They're surprises. Very spiritual in there. people. You oh, know, okay. so <laughs> it's it's music has been a part of me since I was young. Uh huh. And then yeah, I actually don't know. I actually still don't understand why I um, I, I I haven't put out my own record because that is what I started with mm. before DJing came in. Yeah. I guess maybe DJing was paying me so much that I forgot about my talent. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. Sheesh. My you can't see that. You know, <laughs> really so yeah, so even before I get I go into the studio with an artist, yeah. I know what I want. Yeah. I know what I want to hear. Yeah. So I just like Yang Chile, Jama, those songs were like a blessing to me. Like it's you more know, than a blessing man. Yeah, you, you no know idea, because especially that Jama. Kwisiata, we recorded that song in like twenty fourteen. Okay. Yeah. Around we recorded Yen Chile before we he even recorded Grind Day. Oh wow. <laughs> His hit song, yeah. I see. Yeah. And then so um two thousand and eighteen he came for my concert, the shutdown um show, my my annual concert. And then after that he he was like, Bro, we have to draw that song and I was like, Yeah, it's about time. And then we I I went back into the studio with K so we put like finishing touches to the song. And then we mastered the song, and then boom, I dropped it. But then after I dropped the song, I went to the UK. I was in the UK for a while, so I couldn't shoot the video for the song. Okay. But then when I came back, I realized that the song was big. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, you know. And then after last year, I dropped, no, it was in December. That's, that year, I dropped two songs. I dropped Jama the same year in December. Mm -hmm. I dropped Jama, and then it blew after a week. No, Jama is still is still there. It was like, Jama. all over the <laughs> Even place. Even today, Jama is still Jama. It was all over the place. I was like, oh God, you know. Let me tell you a secret. I started dropping songs in 2012. <laughs> the catalog. <laughs> yeah, I dropped my first single with El and Scientific. It's called The Reminder. It was a rap song. Oh, hold on. Did you rap? No, they <laughs> rapped. It's okay. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, 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 I wasn't part of it. And then I went ahead to drop another song with Manifest. I know get time. And I dropped another hip hop song, and then, you know, so I've been doing this for a minute, but then um, these songs became big. Jama, yeah. Yenko, and then the one with Family, Thank God it's Friday for the masses. Mm -hmm. And I recently just dropped Juju. The Juju. I, I was actually going to ask you about it because yeah. I heard about that one also. Yeah, Juju with some mad collaborations mm -hmm. on there, like mad mm -hmm. artists like Ghana, Nigeria, Colabo. Yeah. Wow. So, how, how is the Juju doing now? Juju is actually. It's doing really well. <laughs> it's doing really well. You know, like when you drop a song and like one or two weeks and then people are tweeting the lyrics, you should know it's doing really well. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's and I, 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 I feel proud. Like I'm like, I actually, I become like happy when I hear people talk about my song. You go yeah. somewhere and they're like, yeah. oh, be like, say you do, they, they, they sing your song. I was like, oh God. Like they wrote it, eh? You yeah. know, like I feel yeah, like, you passion. know, oh, I've done a good job. Like, you know, and, and, and it makes me want to do more. You actually should do more. It, it makes me want to do more. So I am actually going to go on the, the very last break. And uh, when I'm back, I'll open the phone lines. Now, what I need you to do is call and then ask one of them a question each. That's all I want from you, okay? And um, before I go again, there's one thing I need to know. Um, could you manual? First, no botai, you know. <laughs> and Mike Smith, he was in robes. He was a choir star. <laughs> At least these two alone is enough <laughs> surprise for the wide refresh. Please stay tuned with that shot. All right, so welcome back. Like I said before, uh, the phone lines are open now. It's 0555 um, I urge you to call and uh, you can ask either Mike Smith or Kojo Manuel a question and then we can take it from there. So it's obvious that when you find yourself in some of um, a kind of job, MCing, presenting, DJing and all that, it takes, well, I assume or we no usually assume that it takes all our time and that he probably would have had issues with uh, relationships, family, friends and all that. Kojo, Mike, 
do you have such situations well, where your job seems to take you away from your loved ones? No, I haven't had that because, like I said earlier on, um, I was I was I was a nobody. I was on the streets. I was sleeping on the streets. I was I was doing all sorts of things just to get money to feed myself. Mm. So when the time came for me to do what I had to do, nothing stopped me. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I just went. I just out. went all out. Yeah. yeah. I just went all out, and then I made I made it happen, and then God made a way for me. Mm, mm, mm. So so Mike, twelve years in the game, right? Are you 12? not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> twelve years in the game. Yeah. I need to mention three you. Mm -hmm. Your top three DJs. Minus you. Minus me. My yes. top three DJs. Um, I always put Killer Fingers in there. Okay. I always put DJ Black in there. And then um, DJ Mensa. Ghana DJs. Oh. Mensa, Black, Killer Fingers. Yeah. Manuel. Yeah. Who the own can DJ so? <laughs> so, your top three MCs. MCs. Hmm. Tricky list. Um, top three, I'll definitely have Eddie Blay in there. Um, Eddie Blay, I'll put... I'm, I'm, it's, it's tricky because I don't know whether I should add the corporate people or not because there's that demarcation in between. Um, it's up to MC. you. Okay, so Eddie Blay, mm -hmm. then I'll give Jerry Ajololo. Okay. And then Giovanni. All right, so Eddie Blay, Jerry Ajololo, Giovanni. Yeah, yeah you tried to touch on all the. <laughs> but didn't be smart. But said that Jerry guy. Hey, Jerry is the uh, Jerry. Like Jerry I pick Mike and then I start calculating money. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's amazing. Oh, the he's guy is amazing. Man. Look, me man said when I listen to him, I'm like, oh wow. <laughs> I the imagine woman they listen to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's done. Now the two of you. Two of your top presenters, and then two from you. Two of my top presenters. Um, <laughs> Make it no machine name. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> two of my top presenters. Ooh. Damn. It's, it's way more difficult than you realize. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you See know. how he was excited. Yeah, but no. Yeah, no, no, it's actually. You know, I'll put, I'll, put, I'll put Eddie Blay in there. Let me tell you why. Because okay. of his vibe and his energy on air. Yeah. You know, he has yeah. so much energy. And he's different. That's one thing I like about Eddie Blay. Eddie Blay goes all out. He kills it. His energy, his I just vibe. remember something I should have said when I was answering mine. Should I, add, should I add? Let me finish mine. Yeah, finish. <laughs> finish mine. And also, I'll go for DJ Black. DJ Black, because... As he, a presenter. Yes, he okay. plays and talks at the same time. Yeah. And growing up, he was somebody like we all looked up to. You know, yo, DJ Black is doing this. He's actually one of the guys who paved the way for us, some of us. You know, so I'll forever respect him and give him that credit. DJ Black, man. I mean, I used to listen to him a lot. <laughs> like, yo, I want to be like him. You don't want to talk about that, eh? I want, <laughs> like, I want to be like <laughs> him. I want to talk like him. Yeah. But it's rather unfortunate. We, we all can have the same talent. True. Yeah. You know, that's what he has. That's what God gave him. That's his special talent, you know. So, yeah, DJ Black and then Eddie Blake. Bojo. So, top DJs, right? Yeah. yeah, but before no, presenters. That, oh, presenters. Yeah, yeah, yeah presenters. Oh, you did right. MC, now I want presenters. Oh, oh presenters. Top. Wow, and I was thinking about my answer for DJ. Wow, now you threw me off guard. So, <laughs> top presenters. Um, I'll definitely... I feel like we're saying Eddie Blay over and over again. But my reason for saying Eddie Blay again is because um, there was a time where I was actually looking for someone to learn from. You know, and and it was it was difficult to find somebody that I can watch and actually feel like okay, he did this. That's cool. Let me learn from it. And Eddie Blay was that guy. So that's why, like, I appreciate um, Eddie Blay so much. And then my other the other person I'll put in there is Brownberry. All right. So I'm gonna take your advice to the newbies, the the new folks coming up. They look at us and they think we are kids. <laughs> I keep saying this thing, and it's the truth. Your advice to them. But before that, this Eddie Blay name you've been hearing, uh, it kind of rings a bell. So if you have a chance, type NFL. Mm. Mm. NFL. Mm. And when you type NFL, 
just look at the year that pops up and you understand what the really means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your last words, and I need you to target the young folks who the want to be folks. like you. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I've been wanting to say this. Um, shout out to the young guys um, who actually thinks that everything comes easy. It's not like that. Some of us has to go ha ha has to go through it. Like we 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 went through a lot to get to where we are now. I I did a lot of things to get to where I am now. I did a lot a lot of free stuff. People turned their backs on me. The whole industry turned their back on their back on me and all that. But I didn't give up because I knew what I wanted. I kept on pushing. I pushed hard. Sometimes I go days without eating. I have to, sometimes I have to walk from wherever to, let's say, Nima for just a concert. To just see Obra for perform. To just see Lord Kenya perform. I remember one day I just walked from Osu to Adabraka just to look for Lord Kenya. Because I was a big fan of him. And then he wasn't there. It was just slip music. It was just the label. But he wasn't there. But I just wanted to see him because I was a big fan. You know, nothing comes easy. Just... Be focused, I mean, work hard, pray to God, and don't let anything distract you. Go for what you want. All right. Kojo. <coughs> I have a lot to say, but I'll try and keep it short. Try, try. <laughs> I'll try. In a minute. Okay, so what I'm going to say is, if you're somebody that's trying to come up, whether as a presenter, MC, or whatever, stay away from these two things, comparisons and envy. Fact. These things will weak you. Now, most of the time, I say energy, and people think, oh, it's about being hyper. No, it's about positive energy and negative energy. Yeah. So if I walk around with a clear conscience about everything I'm doing, but you hate me or you don't like me, so I have I also develop hatred for you. Now, my positive energy has become bad energy. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not walking around with a clean mentality True. anymore. So never let anybody mess with your positive energy and your good heart. And if you do that, then God can bless you because God doesn't bless wicked people. <laughs> so if you want God's blessings, just do that and follow your heart. Be positive. Stay focused. Yeah. And that's one of the things that Kojo Mano wants to tell us and then Mike Smith also. Well, so if you're wondering these guys who they are, I did say it from even before we started. These two guys are the people behind Drive of Your Life. Okay. So this is who they are. Why Refresh, you're going to be hearing from them over and over and over. And you never get tired of it. That's the interesting part. You never get tired of them. Anyway, so I'm just going to say a very big thank you to all of you for being part of this show. Thank you, Mike Smith. Thank you, Kojo, for coming. I urge you to come again. Oh, bye. You can something else. Oh, oh yeah. My mind One day we for talk football matter for here. Giddy, giddy. We uh, intimidate uh, support. Do, I don't do soccer. We'll find something uh, for you. We intimidate uh, support. Barcelona. Ah, so Chelsea for... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you very much for being part of this show today. Thank you to Casapreco Alomo Beaters for being uh, our sponsor, and also Yam Vita from Promacito for being part of this. Um, CBG, we haven't forgotten you. You've been very helpful for our financial month. I'm going to draw the curtains down here. We'll be back next week with another exciting episode of the Men's Lounge. Thank you. <laughs>